Hey, 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 this is Akebono Gregory Monavis Jr. This is show number 210, recorded on September 28th, 2015. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to another one of my podcasts. I know it has been quite a little while since my last show, and uh, I was planning on doing a show yesterday, but I lost part of my voice, and uh, I'll tell you about why I lost part of my voice. So if it sounds like I'm going through puberty today, uh, I'll uh, I'll get to that here in a little bit. A uh, quick show note, today's show is going to be a little bit different because since it's been so long since I talked to you guys, this is just going to be the recap and a geek talk word and the song of the week because I got so much to tell you about and what's been going on and then probably next week I'll probably do the just the regular show because I got so much content to talk about but I was looking at today's show notes and I was like you know what man I've got a lot to do (laughs) so so let's just jump into the recap talk to you to you it's uh, about a month and a half since the last show so this is what's been uh, happening here The uh, Bass Pro Shops in Brandon has finally opened, and I've been a fan of this mega outdoor store for a long time, and we finally got one in here, and it was crazy because they opened it up on a Wednesday, and I wasn't planning on going on opening day, and my niece thought it would be a good idea to go there on opening day. Well, the line to get in there was like a mile long, I'm serious, from both ends, and the parking lot was full. There, it was just not going to happen if you're going to get in there. So I waited a little while. I actually waited probably just about two or three weeks. And then on another Wednesday, just in the middle of the week, I said, you know what? It can't be that busy um, after a couple weeks of opening. You know, once you get the initial grand opening and everyone's got to go check it out and everything. And we, I went and checked out on Wednesday and it was dead. So I pretty much walked the entire store and checked everything out other than the clothing. I'm not really into clothing, but I mean, lots of fishing gear, camping gear. I was a little lost in fishing because I've been looking at fishing poles lately because my buddy has a boat and he was like, hey, man, you need to get some stuff and uh, we'll go fishing. Well, I admit, for someone who's been fishing his whole life, I have never actually bought the equipment. Sure, I can tie a line and and, and know how to cast, of course, but I've never actually bought my own poles. It's, it's, it's crazy. I've just used everyone else's gear. So as an avid fisher, I have to admit that I, I really don't have any gear. So uh, I got confused in the fishing area and uh, found my way over to the camping and gun section, which I immediately fell in love with. Not so much the guns I looked at. I loved all the accessories that they have, the safes, the cases, all the ammo all the accessories you can get a lot of ar accessories some of the stuff i just did to uh one of my ars i bought online now i can i can buy stuff at bass pro shops which is nice to do and i I like to shop around i always try to check a few sources before i lock into everything but really cool store got the uh, whole florida theme going so the tank inside usually they have a, a a fish tank it's all uh, fresh water and uh, all the different fish that are native to Florida. There's a restaurant there, too, I haven't got to try out yet. Um, my buddy and I w- did go back a couple weeks, and then he gave me the intro to all the different kind of fishing equipment to go through. So at least I've got a, a uh, some kind of base to go with. But I did buy some uh, accessories for my, for my uh, rifle. And I uh, also picked up a uh, tackle box that I'm not using for tackle. I'm using it for gun parts because... Uh, you know, as, as many firearms as I have, I never had like a central place where I should keep all the cleaning stuff and, and little bits and tools that, that, uh, you may need to help clean up or do any kind of maintenance on it. And, uh, picked up a nice plano tackle box and put everything in there so uh so i'm just happy to have one open now so if i need to go check it out if i need to go get something i i got something nearby and it's right near the uh, top golf and brandon that i've talked about and uh if, you, if you're not familiar with top golf just a nice uh driving range for golf you don't have to be a golfer it's kind of like bowling and golfing kind of mixed together but check out topgolf.com if you've never been uh, to one before fear of the walking dead started a little while ago now this is the spin-off series to uh to the walking dead and it's a cool show i like the concept of it it's about the initial outbreak of the uh, of the zombies and it's a whole different crew it's based out of los angeles so it's right at the beginning of the outbreak i'd have to admit the first episode was a little slow but I said, you know what, I'm not going to base the show off of the first episode. And uh, and, and it picked up. It, it, it did. It, it's not 
as fast as The Walking Dead. Not that The Walking Dead it's always has a fast show either. They just have more time to build up the characters. But it's neat to see how things were initially handled on the different side of the country since uh, Rick's group is based out of uh, Georgia, and I think they're heading to the D.C. area or something like that. This one's all uh, based out of Los Angeles, and it's just a short series. I think it's only like six episodes, and it's kind of like an experiment to see if, if there's enough um, – demand out there and there actually is the the viewership for it's been really high and i read an article today about um fear the walking dead flight like 142 it's going to be a web series about again at the initial time of the outbreak of the zombies how somebody on a plane is infected now whether the person's already turned into a zombie or not uh it's got to make it pretty interesting uh uh, what would you do if you're in that kind of situation? It's kind of like that movie Snakes on a Plane. You got you got to love a you got a lot of a movie that puts you in a situation where you really can't uh, go anywhere. Celebrated my 42nd birthday. Yes, hard to believe I'm 42 years old. I, I still feel, act, uh, and also being told I look like a kid. Uh, I accused of being in barely my early 30s. So uh, thanks, Mom and Dad, for uh, those genetics. And uh, we went to, uh, and I had to break um, I had to break up my celebration because certain people are certain at available times. Everyone's so busy these days, right? So uh, with my stepdad and a couple friends, we went to a Dunderbox in the New Tampa area. And I haven't eaten there in probably four or five years. Uh, been, been a while since I since I've been there. Uh, since pretty much since I left USF because it's near the University of South Florida area. So we met up there and uh, had dinner, a couple beers, good good old time. Another ser- celebration was at um, Mongolian Grill in Lakeland, and that's one of those places where you grab a bowl and put all the kind of food you want into it and uh, go to the grill, and they cook it for you. And I, I like that a little more over the Genghis Grill in Brandon because Genghis Grill is a one-time approach. That's it. You, If you want another bowl, you got to pay for another bowl. Where it was Mongolian, you, you pay a couple extra dollars more, but that's unlimited. The, the difference between one bowl and unlimited is only like $2. It's like, uh, duh, give me the unlimited. And then one more final celebration with uh, my friend's mother. She made me a Puerto Rican lasagna dinner. Now, I didn't know it was a Puerto Rican lasagna dinner. The meat is a little different. And we had some yellow rice and some plantains. So um, hence to say that uh, I ate pretty well uh, for my birthday week. And I trust me, I wasn't trying to milk this. The Dunderbox actually happened on my on my real birthday. So uh, everything else uh, followed up after that. New Iron Maiden um, record came out called The Book of Souls. And uh, I'm a late bloomer to Iron Maiden, but I really like this band. And this album is fantastic. It's like a double album. And um, I purchased it off of iTunes because they have a Mastered for iTunes program where you actually get the 24-bit recording, compressed, mind you, but the claim through all the technical manuals I read up. Because I had to to look up. If you've been through iTunes, you might notice a record says Mastered for iTunes. Well, what the heck is that? Well, what they did is that they Apple requested that the artist send them the original 24-bit recording. And then through their compression algorithms, they put it on iTunes. So, you know, to save a lot of space for the downloads and everything. Well, they claim that the sound is actually better than a CD. And I tell you, I did a comparison. And there is a difference. I I can hear at least. My my ears kind of trained for that. So you got to understand that. CDs, as great as they sound, is a 30-year-old technology, and they are actually recorded or converted into 16-bit. They took a lot of uh, um, uh, analog recordings and converted it to 16-bit, or they just went ahead and recorded once they decide, an artist decided to go digital in 16-bit. Well, 24-bit is a higher sampling rate, so you can get more of that music into the file, and you get uh, Dolby 5.1 surround sound out of it. So it's a big difference in how the uh in, in how it sounds so that that ma- that makes a big difference right there so anyways I, I i sampled it and then i've been kind of playing back and forth and i um if there's a master for itunes program i'm just going to go ahead and download it off the uh itunes purchase it of course i tell you it's weird my my days of cds are probably almost over with because you get better quality out of the masters for itunes as you do a regular cd and i understand there are still some diehards out there. I understand owning an album, owning a CD, because 
you get the 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 the, the art and the notes and everything. And uh, iTunes tries to do do its best by giving you a digital PDF download, but uh, but you know you know I, I this the 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 digital portable age where you can just transfer the stuff to your device and uh take it with you and uh coming soon too i'm really happy about this the silver sun pickups just came out with their new album and also the seventh seal album you guys know how much of a uh, seal fan i am so i've um, been looking really forward it's been a while since he's put out an original recording his last two uh recordings were like soul music and they were cover songs and that's fine you know uh, an artist who's uh, like seal who's established it's okay to put out covers but i was looking for original content and and what's cool is on iTunes is that you can pre-purchase a, a an album, and they'll give you a couple downloads ahead of time. So I've already sampled a couple of the new songs off the Seal album, and I'm uh, so far I'm pretty happy with what I've heard. Football season has started, college and uh, in the NFL, and uh, one of the uh, first games that uh, USF had was against FAMU, the Florida A and M University. They came down here for a uh, for a home game. And uh, gotta love that FAMU band. I tell you, they're they're the most unique band out there. I just love their style, that whole shuck and jive and everything. But I'm always excited for football season and and especially tailgating. So I got my uh, tailgate stuff all out my gear because a friend of mine wanted to tailgate and uh, put the tent together. And I tell you, son of a gun, only after three years, the tent is already broken in one spot. So it droops in uh, one corner and uh, I'm not planning on replacing it. It's just uh, I, I, I spent $200 for this for this tailgate tent and uh, basically got two years out of it. And that's about it. You know, you know, they make these things pretty cheap. So you keep on going back and buying it. And I, I thought I bought a, a, a good brand, too. But, you know, oh, well, that, that happens. I tried to fix it. You know, I know these days it's easy just to throw out and replace, but I am one of those people that do try to fix it before I can. But now this bracket's broke and I went online and try to look for a part and they just don't exist. That's how they that's how they get you. But uh, good, good, good opening game by USF. They are able to uh, handily defeat FAMU as they should because it's a double A team and uh, they've they've dropped two games now against uh, FSU and Maryland. But, uh, you know, so they're starting out the season one and, and two. But this past weekend, um, they couldn't lose or win since they had a bye week. So hopefully they can uh, pick up another win here um, real soon. And then uh, did did some laser tag. My uh, my niece had her uh, birthday party. She was turning 13. So I got another teenager amongst uh, my mitts here. But we went to a place out in Wesley Chapel and uh, did some laser tag and uh, went to Boeing. The kids did the Boeing. I didn't do I did the laser tag, but I, I did I didn't participate in the Boeing, which is a bunch of trampolines, but had fun taking pictures and doing videos of them. One, one of my niece's friend is a former gymnast or gymnastics girl so she uh was really really good on the uh on on the trampoline so that that was that was a good time and then uh for the fsu game so the second usf game i kind of got ahead of myself talking about them dropping fsu we had a watch party up in uh, pasco friends of mine started a pasco alumni association so met them up there at the uh, one of the beefo brady's and just hung out and watched the game and i tell you usf played uh um, FSU pretty well, and I was impressed. Even though they lost, uh, I liked what I saw. It was just against Maryland where it just turned into a uh, complete disaster and just was, you know, defeated hands down. And uh, so then uh, the weekend prior after that, I, I went to the – actually, the same weekend, I went to see Van Halen at the uh, Mid-Florida Amphitheater. I think that's what they're calling it now here in Tampa. Um, it was originally the Ford Amphitheater, and it changed to, like, the 1-800-ASK-GARY and then probably another name. I can't keep up. Um, so I'm more of a, an originalist. Uh, I'm just going to call it the Ford Amphitheater. Most people know what I'm talking about there at the Florida State Grounds. And uh, just uh, just a great concert for a bunch of dudes in their 60s. They sounded great. David Lee Roth has been back with the band for about probably about four years now. They put out an album a few years ago. He sounded good. Dave was the one I'm always worried about because uh, as you get older, some, some people tend to lose their voice. But uh, Eddie can still rock that guitar and make it look easy. Alex did a, uh, a solo 
uh, um, Dave did an ice cream man. Talk talked to the talk to the crowd a lot. Very funny and, and enjoyed that. Talked about other artists as well. It's always cool to see a famous musician talk about other other musicians. Um, the only person that didn't do a solo or didn't do any talking to the group was a uh, Wolfgang Van Halen, Eddie's son, who's been uh, playing bass guitar for him for a while since uh, Michael Anthony's no longer with the band. But just a a great show. And I tell you what, though, I'm ready for some new new stuff. Um, this is probably my fourth or fifth time I've seen some version of Van Halen one or another because I've also seen them, on, seen them with uh, Sammy Hagar. I wish Dave would do some Sammy songs because he won't do it. So all their stuff is the older, older stuff, um, with the exception of a couple new songs from a different kind of Truth album they put out a couple of years ago. Sammy would do some of the famous Dave songs, but... You know, you know, these egomaniacs, you know, I ain't doing any Sammy songs, but it'd be nice if he would uh, consider doing doing that. Been studying for my VCP, which is a VMware certified professional, and it is a certification that I had to do for work. I went to this class over the summer, four thousand dollar class that my work paid for. And then this qualifies you to take the test, which is crazy. So you cannot just pay a couple hundred bucks for the certification on your own. You actually have to take the class first. So I've always been asked, why am I not VMware certified? I was like, well, unless you got $4,000 sitting around, I'm, I certainly uh, don't. I think if it's a work thing, maybe work should pay for it. So I was finally able to get the class, um, I'll take the class. And then I, I tell you, I, I took my first attempt at it probably back in July. Maybe I talked about it. Maybe I don't. I usually don't talk about work too much, but this was a big deal for me. Just bombed the test. And uh, I shouldn't say I bombed. I came close to passing in it. But what was upsetting is that the test is nothing like the class I took. The test is nothing like the study guide I, I bought. I bought the study guide that is thick as a, a a Bible and went through it from cover to cover, wrote all kind of notes, and then what you get on the test is a completely different thing. So I had to download a brain dump a friend suggested to me, and it made a huge difference. So when I took the test, I was able to just click through it and just get it, get it going. I mean, I I felt pretty confident and uh, p- passed it this time with uh, with flying colors. And speaking of compute, so so I got my cert before I move on to the computers things. I, I got my certification, so big pressure off my back, and it's a good resume builder as well. Not that I'm looking at leaving because I got a work from home job. I I can't beat that right now, but it, it does look on my resume. Put it on my LinkedIn, and uh, you know I've got that. Uh, past me. And speaking of computers, which I was getting into, my secondary hard drive on my laptop died. And luckily, I have two backups. I run a local backup on an external hard drive I hook up periodically. And plus, I have one of those online backups. Um, I use a product called Crash Plan, but whatever you have, it backs up to the cloud. You know, everything's about the cloud these days. And uh, luckily, because I had these backups, I was able to just purchase a new secondary hard drive and do a restore on it. And I tell you what, it saved my butt. So for those of you people out there who are not running some kind of backup, you're 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 on borrowed time because this laptop I have here is only a couple years old. And my secondary drive is what I was using for all my data. And it was my files, and it was starting to run really, really slow. And then I kept on getting this diagnostic information that something could be wrong with that secondary hard drive. Well, luckily, hard drives don't cost that much. Purchased a new one off of Amazon. They shipped it here in two days off the Prime. Replaced it, fired up, and voila, everything is running. I did a restore. Everything is running 100 percent again. So, uh, so make sure you have those uh, backups. What else been going on here? Oh yeah, broke in some new ice skates. I got some brand new ice skates. My other ice skates that I had were from 1999, and lately it seems like no matter what I did with the sharpening, it just I wasn't able to do the hockey stops like the way I want to. I've been practicing on that for a while. And it just wasn't work working for me. So I did a foot measurement that I, I found on YouTube. You got to you got to thank the stars for YouTube, right? Because I was hesitant to buy um, any kind of shoe or hockey skates online because you never know what kind of size you're going to get. Well, I uh, 
I so I, I I did my sizing, ordered them. They're a little bigger than I wanted to be on the width, but that's fine. I rather have them be a little loose instead of too tight. I didn't realize how tight my last skates were, and I've got wide feet, so I think I just got like the the standard size, and that's why they've always been so tight on my feet. So I took a chance this time and didn't get them sharpened before I got on the ice, but I made sure I went real slow. And boy, was that a big mistake! I didn't fall down, but there was no no grip whatsoever. So I learned really quickly that if you ever do buy your own skates instead of using the rentals and you haven't gotten them sharpened them yet, go get them sharpened. So I immediately, I did a lap, got off the ice, took them off, went to the pro shop and this really nice kid helped me out and, and got me the right kind of sharpening because there are different kind of, they call them hollows. There are different kind of hollows that you put in there and depending on um, if you want them to be sharper or a little more more dull, it all depends on what you want. So more dull is for people like me who like to glide and are or who are a little heavier. Sharper are for people who are lighter and like to do the quick turns because the sharper the blades are, the more they dig into the ice, and it can make a difference in how fast you go. And I'm not looking so much for the speed. I'm looking more or less for the gliding, for the hockey stopping and stuff. So he gave me a standard uh, half-inch uh, sharpening. And put the put the uh, um, ice skates back on, and I tell you what, I felt like a whole new skater. I mean, I didn't realize how how bad a shape my old skates were, and then plus getting a fresh uh, sharpening on it, I was able to do stuff I have not been able to do before. Even started doing backup, um, backing up. I'm going backwards. So I, I, that was like a Friday night. I went by myself, and then I brought my niece on Sunday, and uh, we were both practicing backup. She's a lot better at it than I am. So I made we were using the uh, hockey line or the goal line as our as our marker. So I, I made her go in front of me, um, and then every time we did a lap, we'd stop, turn around, go backwards. And I tell you, after the hour and a half session or so, I started feeling a little better at it. I'm not ready to get out there in the crowd yet and, and do the, the, the normal backwards skating. But it's like anything. The more you practice at it, the better you'll get. All right, moving into the West Virginia trip. Now, I tell you, before I get into everything that I can remember that we did in the, uh, the two and a half, three days I was there, um, total, it was perfect timing for me to go. Cause I tell you that VMware certification test I had to take was very stressful. Even though my boss didn't say my job was writing on it, I had that sense that it kind of was because we, even though my particular group isn't customer facing the salespeepel want to say to the customers that they're trying to wine and dine that the people doing the support for you in the backgrounds are certified in their specialized area and uh you know even though i had this trip planned for a while the the the, the test timing kind of popped up on me from my boss and i've been scrambling the prior two weeks couple weekends i didn't go anywhere and just uh did all that study and so the so the West Virginia trip couldn't come at a perfect time took Thursday and Friday off and was planning a, a Thursday through uh Sunday um trip so nice little perfect time away I love I love uh I love just taking long weekends. I don't like to take it like a week off or anything like that, like Publix forced me to do. I, I just like to take long weekends because then I get out of the the work mind. And I'm I'm not a workaholic, but you know I I put in a good fifty hours a week, and uh, I I just don't like to get away too much because it's just kind of hard to get back to it. Yeah, I know work from home and everything like that, but I tell you, I, I feel like I work more now that I work at home than I did when I did in the office. And I, I think they're just kind of like making up for that uh, lack of commute time or th something like that. You know what? And it's not like my boss tells me you need to work so many hours a week. It's just, it's just, that's just the way it works out. So anyways, uh, it was a, it was a, so I took it off a Thursday through Sunday and I wasn't leaving till Thursday evening. So I kind of had a date on myself, which I, which I kind of needed. So Thursday morning I went out and I got a haircut and and packed in the morning and around noonish i i head out for um for uh, downtown disney and i needed to stop off there to uh, pick up a uh, a couple of uh, christmas items and a couple items for myself <laughs> and uh first of all I, I was starving so i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna hit earl a sandwich not usually a long wait and it wasn't got a nice good tuna melt sandwich and some soup and uh it's funny because 
downtown Disney is no longer the name anymore. It's actually called Disney Springs. There are signs for it everywhere, and it doesn't say formally downtown Disney. So if you're not familiar on how to get there and you're looking for signs for downtown Disney, you're not going to find it. <laughs> it's called Disney Springs. But luckily, I, uh, growing up with Disney World in my life, I, I know my way around, and I tell you, the construction down there is an absolute mess. They have gutted pretty much 80% of all the parking lots, and they're putting in garages. One of the garages is, is, is already open, and it's really neat how they have the system set up in there because they, they uh, tell you on each floor how many parking spots are available. And then when you're driving around, you'll actually see a green light over an open parking spot area. So even though you can't tell whether a car is parked there or not, you'll see a green light over an open area. So you just have to drive down there, grab your spot, and as soon as you pull in, a red light goes goes over it. But that's not just the only construction mess. They're also putting in masses amount of new restaurants and new shops and everything. And they've been working on this for a, a while. So to me, this is nothing new, but I'm not really sure if I've uh, I talked about it or not. So getting out of getting in and out of there might be a, a bit of a challenge. So like I said, I stopped off there for lunch and I wanted to go check out all the new Star Wars stuff. So I did pick up a couple things for myself. I did do a little bit of Christmas shopping, but they have the Force Awakens merchandise in full um, outright marketing, ready to go. <laughs> so it was it was neat to see all this new Star Wars stuff and some old things as well and some exclusives. So if you're into collecting, there are some things that you won't be able to get anywhere else because I had stopped off at Target a couple of days prior and they had the Force Awakens stuff, but their shelf was pretty much empty. <laughs> so so uh, all the collectors are out there snagging this up and then, of course, going to hold on to them for a while or turn around and try to sell them on eBay for some kind of uh, ridiculous, uh, ridiculous pricing. So only only hung out there for a little bit, but I, I tell you, I, I, I love... Uh, I love going down there. I I, I really do. And uh, it's just, uh, hold on a second, phone's ringing. Apologize about that. I usually remember to turn off my phone before I start recording the show. So anyways, we're talking about Disney and just, you know, how much I just love what Walt did um, by constructing Disney World because Disney World is his ultimate dream. And yeah, it's not the original. Disneyland started it out. I've, I've been to Disneyland but th this is everything, man, and they th and they thought of everything, and they continue to keep thinking of everything. It's just uh, the 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 employees down there, the way things are laid out, are just brilliant when it comes to that. And I, I get a kick out of that every time. And I, I've been going since 1979, and uh, it 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 never it never wears out. So. So while I was getting ready to go, my, my uncle starts texting me, and he was like, Hey, man, you need to get down to the airport because a big Boeing 787 is going to be there around 3 o'clock or something like that. And I looked at my clock, and I had about an hour to spare. But Google Maps, of course, told me that it's going to take me over an hour to get there. So I was like, All right, I'll try to I, – I text him back. I'll try, to, I'll try to make it down there and see. But uh, so – so I, I actually made it to the airport with about 20 minutes to spare. So I think Google Maps was off just a little bit. Chicken was a breeze. I had two whole people in front of me. <laughs> it really was. My biggest challenge was trying to find a good spot to take a picture of the 787. The 787 is Boeing's latest aircraft, which, uh, which I was eager to see because I haven't seen one in person yet. Well, they've got this weird jetway set up between um, um, that and the actual windows. So there's like two sets of windows and then you have to go in one door to get to this like hallway and then from that hallway then you can actually access the jetway to get on the plane. Well, I was there a couple hours before the flight so I couldn't get into that, that hallway so I ended up having these two windows in between me and no matter where I went, I had some kind of wall that was in my way or, or something, but I actually found a good spot. And judging from what I saw all the other planes landing, I was going to get some kind of east to west landing, which would have been perfect. I could have got that thing coming in and, and, and touching down and getting the smoke out of the tires or anything. 
Oh, I kid you not, like 10 minutes before the flight landed, they changed the direction from west to east. And my, my uncle and I are texting back and forth. He's like, you sure? Because I, I see an east to west approach right now, blah, blah, blah. We're, we're big plane nuts. So we know we, we can talk a lot of the lingo. And I, and he and I kept telling him, I was like, man, they're landing west to east now. But then he checked. He's like, yep, there. I just checked. They're, they're making them circle all the way around the airport and do a west to east landing. But either way. I was able to get it um, a pic, a bunch of pictures of it. Excuse me, losing my voice here a little bit, but um, I was able to get some great pictures of it. And I tell you what, it is a huge plane. Now, is it big as the triple seven or the seven four seven? No, but you can tell how big the plane was just by the engine, by the guy standing next to it. And the cool thing about the seven eight seven, it's Boeing's latest passenger aircraft. It's mainly made out of carbon fiber. So it makes it very light, but stronger than steel. And they get better gas efficiency, gas efficiency out of it because it's lighter, it can go further, blah, blah, blah. But it was just really, really exciting to see see this uh, plane. And I'm glad I, I got a bunch of pictures of it. And I was able to squeeze. And I, I got a bunch of pictures with my SLR. So they're out on my Facebook, my Google Plus. Um, I uploaded those out there. And I was able to get one more picture of him, at least to send him via the cell phone so I could uh, text it to him. So so that was fun, just looking at the plane and checking it out. And then went to my gate and uh, got got uh, checked out on a brand new A320. So it's, this is an Airbus. And I, I don't have a problem with, with Airbus. I, I like Airbus. They're good planes. A lot of people accuse them of being French planes. And it's like, no, it's a European consortium. It's not a French plane. And even if it was, I still wouldn't have a uh, problem with it. But nice big aisles. Um, you could tell it was a brand new plane. It had like that new plane smell to it, if you, if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, I put on my bows, and before even we took off, I was already drifting off. Something about being on airplanes and listening with my bows, my QC15, so they're, they're quiet comfort headphones. They block out the most of the noise outside of you. It just puts me out. The only thing that kept waking me up is somebody kept farting, like, probably every 10 minutes on the plane. And I tell you, after a few times, I was, I was ready to just start outright, outright just yelling, fart! <laughs> Just to embarrass whoever was doing it. <laughs> yes, I know I can be an ass like that. But other than that, the flight was uneventful. It was an evening flight. Took off probably about 5, 5.30. Arrived in Hagerstown, Maryland, and was starving again by then. So we went to this restaurant drive through called Roy Rogers for a quick bite. Um, I thought my uncle was offering me a cherry Coke. <laughs> so uh, I never tried. It was pretty good pretty good burger, I have to admit. I, I, I enjoyed it. But some, something a little different that I'd, I'd never had before. And then... Um, as we're just driving back to uh, Kaiser, West Virginia, we, we just started with the one-liners from movies, talking about Pittsburgh Dad. We stopped off and saw my cousin real quick. Um, I actually got to use her tickets for the football game I was going to because she had to fly out of town for a wedding in Boston. So talk about timing. But, you know, hey, it works out. For her wedding a few years ago, I missed my 20th anniversary for her wedding. So that that's the way it is. And got to see uh, Daphne, my aunt and uncle's uh a um, little, uh, little dosh, doshin. I don't know how to pronounce it, but doshin. You know, just a little, little, little hairy sausage dog. But she licked me to death, and uh, my aunt was there, and we greeted. So we just hung out for a little bit, and then uh, hit the sack. And then Friday, mo mo Friday morning, we uh, hit the road for uh, Morgantown because we had a, we had a busy, busy day ahead of us. And uh, as as we're driving to. Morgantown, we started doing more of the one-liners and just talking airplanes and football and you name it, just various topics back and forth. Seems like my uncle and I can talk forever. But we stopped off at uh, Cooper's Rock, which is this rock ridge looking over the side of this valley um, down to the, uh, I think, the Shavers River or the Cheat River. I forgot. You know, the Shavers Fork and Cheat. And um, I've been there before, but it, I didn't realize it had been seven years since I'd been there. So I had my uncle recreate a picture I did the first time I went there, but the difference was it was in the snow, and it was seven years ago. So uh, I did a side-by-side -side, um, picture uh, collage and, and put it up on the Facebook so for people to see, and I, I got a lot of likes out of that. That was pretty cool. So we, we just did a quick stop there because we were actually doing good on time on meeting my, my, my cousin and his wife. And, uh, so that, so going to Cooper's rock killed some time. And then we headed into Morgantown and went to one of my favorite restaurants in Morgantown called 
the Varsity Club. And the Varsity Club is just a small little bar and grill right next to uh, Mountaineer Field, Mountaineer Stadium. And um, it, they're famous for their goblets. And I love these goblets because they keep the beer so cold. So you can BS for a while, not worried about your beer going cold. Matter of fact, the last time I visited, the uh, owner gave me one of his goblets. And that's not something I found out he does that often. So I always cherish my goblet um, when, I'm, when I'm having a beer back here in, in good old Tampa. But uh, for lunch, I had three Sam Adams Oktoberfest. So I, I was feeling good. <laughs> I was feeling really good. And then we went out to go see my, uh, my uh, cousin's house house and finally got to meet uh miss harper had their uh their 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 dog their their the cute cute little dog she's a husky she fell in love with me right away just glazing me licking me I, I i put some videos out on my youtube channel so you can check those out uh later and uh he the, i could see that they did a lot of work to this house because he's the superintendent of this uh um, of this park now. He's the head head ranger of this state park, and the, the head ranger gets gets a house paid for by the state. But the guy who'd been there previously uh, apparently was an alcoholic, squandered the money he got that he was supposed to use for uh, keeping the uptake on this house. So I can tell that things were like old and new on the inside, like new carpet and, you know, new, new showers and everything like that. And, and, and they, they've done a good job. And I told him, I told my cousin, I said, I guess you learned a lot about do it yourself the last few months. haven't you? So, uh, just did that, um, you know, checking out of the house and, uh, you know, not really settling in or anything. Cause we're about, we're about, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, uh, we hit the road to go shooting and I got to shoot uh, my cousin's uh, 45 Glock, and I'm a big fan of the 45, but I've never fought, um, shot, fought, I never shot the Glock version. And I tell you that 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 thing was nice. I I really liked it, and even squeezed off some rounds on my uh, cousin's wife's 22, which I got no problem with as well. Had some problems with misfirings on on her um, weapon. So uh, my uncle bought a new uh, magazine and tried that out, and that seemed to make a difference because it's a spring. Now, now 22s are prone to um, jam up anyways because it's such a small bullet, and there's not much gunpowder behind it, and you kind of need that for the cycling. But the gun store was really cool. A lot of AR-15s, a lot of 45s in there, so I was in love with both of those. They even had the double barrel 45 they released for the 100th anniversary of the 1911 45, the famous 1911. Yeah, some Italian company took two 45s and put them together, so a double barrel 45. The thing will only cost you $3,995, and I didn't realize this. After we were done shooting or leaving, I was spouting off a line from uh, Big Lebowski, and this dude who pulled up in his truck heard me shouting off Walter about Sandy Koufax and 100 years. Damn right I'm living in the past. And they, uh, my, my cousin's wife said this dude was just dying, cracking up. I didn't even notice. I, I get into my little phases, and I, I know I'm very loud, so it didn't, I didn't even notice him. But she, she said he was cracking up, and then she was laughing at watching this guy laughing at me. <laughs> so no, so so there we are, t typical uh, typical Greg, right? And then we, we wanted to get ice cream, so we headed off to this uh, local place called the Dairy Cream, and they were getting ready to shut down in a couple of weeks. Uh, I, you know, I didn't realize these places are seasonal, but being up there in the great white North, I, you know, I realized that, okay, well, no one's going to buy ice cream in February. So they closed, so they closed down. So I, I had to test out the chocolate malt and it was very delicious. Had to compare it to Campbell's because we have the Campbell's here in Brandon, Florida, which to me are hands down best ice cream ever. So we all got various different things. And then for some reason, my uncle ended up having like a 90 second brain freeze. He must have inhaled it too fast or something. I mean, he's just sitting on the bench dying. I'm like, what's the matter with you, man? And, oh, it's hitting me, it's hitting me hard. You know, <laughs> he's got a very low baritone voice. So I try to do my best I can with that. So we enjoyed our ice cream and uh, head back to the park. And uh, my, my cousin is the superintendent, like I said, of the Valley State Park. And he had to get back because he had to work. Um, a lot of weddings happen in the summertime down there. So even though we're almost technically out of the summer, you know, this is the last of the good weather. So he said there, there could be three, four, five weddings a day he has to uh, work. So he changed and gotten his official Dodge Ram and head, head down the road. And then we followed a few minutes afterwards. Now he has a, uh, 
he has a uh, Ford Explorer sports track. Well, the whole back seat is full of uh, Miss Harper's hair, lots of hair. So uh, she suggested we don't sit back there, and there's only one seat available in the front. And my uncle's like, oh, we'll just ride in the tailgate. And he's like, okay, yeah, we'll take the tailgate ride down. And uh, she said, oh, don't worry, I'll go real slow. So I, I started filming the thing off my SLR, and I tell you, I felt like we were hitting 50 miles an hour going down that hill. <laughs> I was getting scared, and she said she stayed in. She was going to only stay in second gear, but um, it was second gear at fifty miles an hour <laughs> because my cousin was worried about his brakes getting worn out. And that's the thing, you know, if you if you if you are driving down hills, you should use your gears more than you should you should your brake. You'll just wear your brakes off. So uh, we made it one piece down that waterfall down to the to where the waterfall is at, and gave her a lot of crap for it. So so. Uh, all in fun, nothing, nothing too serious. But uh, took a bunch of pictures of the waterfall. And like I said, my, my my cousin worked a wedding. I tell you what, it's crazy. He works seven days a week. He he doesn't get a day off with all the stuff he has to do down there and all the improvements he needs to do because the guy prior to him just didn't do a whole lot. So he he was actually surprised when we got back from the house after the ice cream. He only had like a couple messages on his message machine and it was more people trying to put in reservations. So they just set up chairs or the gazebo. There's a small fee they collect. They don't have to do anything else but just set up the chairs and make a spot available for them if if anyone else tries to come in and take a take a spot. So um, we were just checking out the waterfalls. I was taking a bunch of pictures and everything. And, uh, and, and we get back to the bench and my uncle's just crashing from his sugar high at the bench. I mean, he, he almost fell asleep, like, like sitting there and then standing up. So it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Um, so we finally got him up. We went on a short little hike because it was getting kind of dark. So we took one of the short trails, nothing, nothing too, no, nothing too big deal. And then we took the ride back up to the top of the hill and this time, my cousin's wife said that she'll only uh, she'll try to make sure she goes slower. So it felt like this time she went thirty miles an hour instead of fifty. Still, still felt pretty fast um, going on that going on that ride back up. And you know, I have the video evidence to to, to prove it. So my cousin got back after he was done working the um, wedding and closed down the park. And we went to dinner at a distillery called Heston Farms and had a nice little din dinner there. It's one of those distilleries that has a farm and a little kind of um, general store. Kind of kind of reminded me of Cracker Barrel. Tried out the shine. Wasn't too impressed by it. I, I think the Tennessee Sugarland shine has uh, spoiled me when it comes to the standard of... Uh, good shine. So I had a nice dinner and I went to the, uh, back to the house to do a little, uh, bonfire and my uncle's y y uh, complaining to his son, my cousin, that, that he didn't give him a fire starter. He just gave him a piece of newspaper, but he has a fire pit on this hill right behind his house. So, uh, we got the wood on there and got the fire going, but it wasn't doing too well. So, um, we were able to acquire a little bottle of rubbing alcohol and threw that on. And that seemed to be working fine. The rubbing alcohol was fine. I, I don't like using gasoline because of the fumes or anything. Well, my uncle went into pyro mode and decided to pour some kind of grease oil on top of it and threw a plastic pottery plant on top of that. And I was like, weren't we planning on making s'mores or something? I mean, you know, I don't want toxic fumes, you know, save the planet, man. <laughs> so, so, uh. So we got the fire going. It, it, it felt really good. We, we, we ended up not doing s'mores, but I made sure that um that it was like clear before getting too close. And then there was a bit of chill in the air that night. And uh, uh, being near the fire just uh, made me sleepy. So I was kind of like dozing off a little bit. But uh, while we're sitting there talking and, and BSing, I... I turned on the dueling banjos because I figured that would be uh, perfect for the <laughs> the setting right now. So <laughs> what better way to be in West Virginia and play the play the dueling banjos, right? So so we uh, we wrapped it up. We didn't want to be out too late cuz uh we had game day the next day. So uh we went to the uh my uncle and I went to the Wingate Hotel and we got our own rooms and then um uh, 
just chilled out until the morning. Probably left about 10.30 or so and had to stop off and get ice and some gas, fill up the coolers and everything. Picked up my cousin, and then we got some Little Caesars pizza, and then we met at our tailgate spot. Uh, he has a spot that he parks at that's an apartment near the uh, near the stadium. So we just hung out, and it was funny to hear the, uh, the locals talk about how hot it was and how they moved into the shade. And I, I finally I got some revenge from the uh, Arctic cold uh, game that I had years ago to hear the locals talking about. Oh my gosh, how how hot it is! I was like, man, you don't you you don't know hot, please. This is this is nothing. This isn't a September. You know, I was almost shivering last night if I had not been sitting next to the uh, fire. But uh, come game time, we headed out to the stadium, and my uncle got us on-field passes. So it was really cool to be there on the field and seeing the players warming up and everything. Got to meet Skylar Howard, who is the uh, starting quarterback of the uh, West Virginia Mountaineers. And my uncle's brother-in-law got a picture with him. So he was uh, pretty pretty ho- um, pretty proud about that picture. And got to see uh, Dana Holgerson, who's the um, head coach of the uh, Mountaineers. He has a Red Bull refrigerator on the sideline. Supposedly he drinks like 10 of these during the games, if not even more. So had to snap a picture of that and then uh, got to meet the offensive coach line. And there was a Marine who had, who was a recent, um, um, a veteran who was getting, who got out he was a purple heart winner. I didn't ask him about how he got his injuries or anything, but we shot the breeze a little bit and talked a little bit about, about the Marines and stuff. And then, uh, the, the, uh, ROTC people were having a hard time getting the field goal net up and my cousin ended up catching one of the balls on the uh, field. So my uncle saw that as a, uh, good sign. So we, we wrapped it up, got back to our seats, um, because Brad Paisley was going to open up with, uh, country roads and uh, the game kicked off, and it didn't end or stop or slow down one bit. The uh, the Mountaineers end up routing Maryland forty five to six. It was a one sided butt kicking. And um, the reason why I'm hoarse is earlier in the game um, there was a late hit on Skylar Howard, and the initial call was targeting. And then it got dismissed, and I had a conniption. I lost it, and that's why I don't have a voice now. I was screaming so loud that the, I'm sure they heard me on on the sidelines because what's been annoying me is the NCAA has been calling all these non-targeting calls, and then something actually happens and nothing. <laughs> so, so it, it was. I, I just, I just went nuts. But uh, luckily, my uncle during the game got us some Zool's lemon slush, and yeah, Zool. So the the Ghostbuster one liners came out, and, and and so we we had a little bit of that. And during the middle, of the, during one of the ga- middle of the game, I, I don't, I don't exactly remember where. I just happened to look down to the gentleman sitting in front of me, and I didn't mean to, but uh, he had some serious butt crack going. I mean, it was just all popped out and, you know, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't feel the breeze. And uh, so I so I elbowed my cousin and I, I pointed down and he just rolled his eyes. And then I elbowed my uncle and he looked and he started cracking up and even got his wife's attention. And my aunt looked down at it and her brother looked down at it. So we had a little little butt crack joke in the middle of uh middle of it but the mountaineers were doing so good i kept teasing my uncle let's leave let's leave because apparently this guy who's been sitting in front of him um who didn't want to sit in front of him today has been one of those people that leave at the third quarter you know kind of like those people at baseball games that leave at the seventh inning so uh mountaineers are doing so good i was like come on let's get out he's like no no we we gotta stay for country roads i was like we already did country roads and he's like no we gotta do the john denver version so so of course you know i don't i don't leave early i was just messing with him but uh so we stayed to the end and, and did the John John Denver version of uh, Country Roads, and uh, I, I tell you, I, I love I love the Mountaineers and I love all the pride they have. But I tell you what, I do not want a USF stadium um, after sitting where we're at because we were packed in tight like uh, sardines. And traffic getting out of there was horrible. And my cousin made a good point. You know, he said these roads were built for 60s traffic and not today. But I, I tell you, with the with the Bulls games, they do a good job of making sure traffic goes one way on one major road and south and north on one major road, south on another major road, and that's it. You can't take the side roads to get out of there. But my uncle knows his way around, and we went around the way outskirts of, of uh, Morgantown to come back in and uh, head to IHOP for dinner because something about pancakes. I was in the mood for 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 pancakes maybe a nod to my sister-in-law or something like that but we we stop off at uh we stop off at ihop for uh for for dinner 
And then the drive home was pretty quiet because it was late. My, my my aunt passed out in the in the back. And then every now and then my uncle and I started one-liners. And then we got to talking about planes again. And we, we talked about the uh, the Asiani uh, plane crash that happened in San Francisco. It's 777. And I brought up how the news reporters got the names of the pilots wrong. There's supposed to be four names. And um, I looked it up. It was Captain Sumting Wong. We too low, holy fook, and bing ding ow. And at the time in the car, I only can remember a couple names, but we about pissed ourselves laughing. I mean, laughing, laughing, laughing. I'm surprised we didn't wake my aunt up. And when we got back to the house, he looked up the YouTube and had to play the YouTube video all over again because it just, it, it, it was just, it was just good stuff. So. So after that, I, I turned in and uh, had to get up early Sunday morning to head head back to K- Hagerstown. But before we took off, um, I wanted to stop by and see my cousin's house up in the hill in the light. So got some nice pictures of her house, even though she wasn't there. But thanks again for for the tickets, cuz. And uh, made, made it on to Hagerstown and uh, got a picture of where the A-10s were once made. The A-10 Warthogs were made at the same airport where Hagerstown back. And flew back on an MD-88 that had the Blue Man Group painting on it. So I'm a big Blue Man Group um, uh, uh, band, if you want to call them that, Blue Man Group. But uh, it, w- it was the plane. So I got a picture of that and I was happy to fly back. And lo- thank God again I had my, my bows because in between songs I heard this whiny kid just just crying the entire flight so only between songs did i partially hear this kid and as soon as the music starts up on those bows i don't hear anything so in closing just all around just a great trip and uh you know i have to say something to my usf family we need pride like the Mountaineers do. We need to build that up somehow. I know we're not the greatest football team right now, but, man, what they've got going up there is something special, and I'm glad to be a part of it. The the, the whole one side of the stadium screaming, let's go. The other side screams Mountaineers with the Mountaineer mascot guy waving the musket around left and right and every first down they do this little chant of course the country roads is a tradition up there we 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 need to get some tradition going our football program's not even 20 years old yet but you know it'd be something that uh i'd like to see happen there in closing so you know i'm gonna try to go back again in november for one of the um um texas games so uh look forward to uh look forward to hopefully going back there and i'll let my uncle know in the next couple days because he he already looked up flights yes 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 he did so so yeah well that's gonna go ahead and uh actually wrap up this week's show yeah um i'm just gonna you know we're just doing the recap and uh the song of the week and the song i picked is from uh van halen of course since i recently saw their concert and it's called i'll wait from their 1984 record 1984 how how appropriate i believe this was dave's last uh record with him until he did um a different kind of truth back back from 2011 2012 you know they had all the sammy hagars and and gary what's his face from extreme in between but uh but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and finish up this week's uh show by singing sing, doing a van halen song i almost said i'm gonna sing it you don't want me singing it with this voice i'm sure you can hear it raspy now so just one little quick shout out to my mom happy birthday mom her birthday is tomorrow and uh that'll go ahead and wrap up this week's show i'm glad y'all stuck around had enough just to do a recap so this is Akebono Gregory Monavis Jr. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. If you get any comments, suggestions, feedbacks, please send me an email at akebonoradio at gmail.com. We are also on Twitter at Akebono Radio. Look us up there. Look for shows and our YouTube channel. Look for Akebono Radio on the YouTube channel. I, I'll get those up um, uploaded to the uh channel next once i get all the editing done on this side so look for another show here real soon promise it won't be another month and a half since i got all this other content to talk about got a lot to talk about in the next show as well so you enjoy the song of the week and we will be talking to you soon see you later Mm -hmm.